law enforcement officers from different agencies who had self-deployed to the scene in overwhelming numbers were themselves waiting for leadership decisions about how to proceed. Many officers reported that they did not know who, if anyone, was in charge, what they should do, or the status of the incident. Some officers were confused about why there was no attempt to confront the active shooter and rescue the children. Some officers believed the subject had already been killed or that law enforcement was in the room with the shooter. Seventy-five minutes after the first officers arrived on scene, officers finally entered room 111. The subject engaged the entry, room, entry team with gunfire and the officers responded with fire. 77 minutes after the first officers arrived on the scene and after 45 rounds had been fired by the active shooter, the shooter was killed. Well, almost two years um, after the Uvalde shooting, the, mm -hmm. the Department of Justice has released its independent review. It is, as you would imagine, emotional and uh, as confounding as it was to almost two years ago. Welcome back. You're watching the second half hour of the News at Noon. Yeah, that was U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland, and what he describes on May 24th of 2022 was utter chaos. The report calls the police response a failure on multiple levels, resulting in a 77-minute delay from the time the gunman entered the classroom to the time he was killed by law enforcement. News 4's Amanda Henderson has spent most of the last two years in Uvalde. Uh, she has spoken and had a chance to speak with family members who held their own press conference today. Amanda, what was the big takeaway for you? Uh, and what was more importantly, what was their takeaway from what they heard and saw in that report? Yeah, I'm going to start with their takeaway, David. Their big takeaway is that they hope that by this report coming out that it's going to light a fire for a domino effect to begin to see more reports. You might remember we still have the city of Uvalde independent report that was requested about a little more than a year ago at this point, and it has been delayed time and time again because they've been waiting on information as well. They're also hoping that this will speed up the district attorney's report because again, that has also been delayed and delayed and delayed. You may remember from earlier this week, we talked with both Brett Cross and Berlinda Ariola, two people who lost loved ones in the Robb Elementary mass shooting, and they told us that they have been told this is a wall that we have to get through. We can't get through it yet. And now with the DOJ having released their report, they're hoping that that wall is coming down, that they're going to be able to discuss with them, hey, here's what is out there. What are you going to take with this information? We did see last night that the district attorney released a statement saying that she didn't quite have the DOJ report yet. So we're waiting on an update on if she has that as well now that it is public for everyone to see, read and comprehend. Now, earlier in that press conference, the families did make mention of the fact that nothing that happens will bring back their loved ones. But they did mention some things that they want to see again as a result of this now being public. Take a listen. And it is time because our community is so divided because of this, because they don't want to believe that the people that they grew up with failed our children and they stand against us. I'm hoping that they read this. There are names in there and the community needs to see this and y'all need because the DOJ stamp is on there. Maybe y'all will start taking us seriously now. And that's Brett Cross who lost his son Uzziah Garcia in the mass shooting. You can imagine that this is an emotional day. It's been an emotional week for them. It's been an emotional just journey every single day since May 24th. And this, they say, is the first time where they really feel like something has been fully put together since the House report back in July of 2022 that describes for them a little bit more of what happened or lack of what happened that day. And they always tell us that they want their loved ones names to be remembered, their legacies to be honored, because at the end of the day, they say they are their voices for the 21 plus one who were taken because of the Robb Elementary mass shooting. 21, of course, representing the 21 victims inside of Robb Elementary, the plus one for so many of these families representing Joe Garcia, who is the husband of teacher Emma Garcia. You may remember his family saying he died of grief just two days after the mass shooting. 
there's so much to digest with all of this when it comes down to it, David, Diana. It's a lot for them to take in, but the biggest takeaway they want everyone to hear, remember their names, remember their legacies, and do not forget what happened on May 24th, 2022. We'll toss it back to you. Amanda Henderson live there in Uvalde. She has been there and anchoring our coverage uh, since the very beginning, um, a voice uh, in many ways uh, for those 21 families. Uh, Jordan Elder is also there in Uvalde and she has had a chance to go through some, if not most of that 500 page report. Jordan, you've been pouring through the pages of this report from uh, the beginning early this morning, and there's no doubt it's going to be weeks before we really get to go through all and digest everything that was released. But what are some of your big takeaways today that stood out to you? One of the biggest takeaways I think that we're learning from the report is just the breakdown of communication that happened on May 24th, but also in every day that followed. We have extensively covered the lack of communication in the building at the time of the tragedy, but we also got an inside look into the crisis communication that went out. I remember when we were on our way to Uvalde, a post went out from the Uvalde Police Department that said the shooter is in custody. We now know the shooter was not in custody. They had uh, taken out the shooter at that point. The report says that that post was never corrected. It was never communicated to the community that the threat was neutralized, that there wasn't a community danger anymore. And the widely accepted guideline is, if you know that, you should tell that to the community. And that was not done in this case. That post was actually never updated, as this report said. And that's something that we had been wondering about in the months after the shooting, why that was not clarified. Another one of the communication breakdowns that is just, it's heartbreaking to think about. It was in um, the reunification and identification. Um, we stood outside the Civic Center for hours on that day, watching families get the news that their child did not make it out of that school. And one of the things that we learned in the report today was, there were FBI personnel on scene that had extensive experience in delivering that kind of news to family members who weren't expecting it. But what the report said is that instead of having those FBI officials deliver the news, it was actually Texas DPS. And they were saying that the people who ended up doing that communication did not have the training for it. And so that news maybe wasn't delivered in a way that was respectful to the families. AG Garland was speaking on the fact that some for some of the families the first th thing that they heard about their child not making it was that they needed an autopsy conducted they had not had that conversation of your child unfortunately did not make it out of the classroom and that was the way that they found out probably the worst news that they will ever receive so there there are several other communication breakdowns that happened throughout this incident but those are the two that that really resonated with me looking through the report this morning uh, attorney general earlier about buses parents were being told there were buses of children coming in that never arrived and then this post on social media that went out about noontime saying that everything was okay and the threat had been neutralized and then we're hearing more about the uh, particular failures and the names of the school police chief and other law enforcement that were named in this report. In your opinion, uh, what is the most glaring thing? We've, we've talked so much in the months since this has happened about the failures of law enforcement that day. But just today, we learned that it's possible that the classroom door may not even have been locked in classroom 111. So were there some other things about the law enforcement response that day that surprised you? What we learned today was a lot of little details that support the overall conclusion that we've known pretty much since the tragedy happened, which was that the response was a failure. So all of those details from searching for keys to go to an unlocked door, from leaving the radios in the car, we're learning a lot more details that kind of confirm reporting that we have already done about what happened that day. And so that is definitely one of the big takeaways that a lot of these things that we have been told and reported on for almost two years now were confirmed. And this official agency is saying 
we've seen the evidence, we have seen the proof of all of these little failures that led to the overall failure. Um, one of the things that was mentioned in the report, the, the communication breakdown with EMS, law enforcement was putting children with bullet wounds on buses to go to the reunification center without even telling medical professionals that that was happening. Those children didn't get treated until later. Um, details like that, that the DOJ really wants other communities and Uvalde to learn from so that that's not the case ever again. And as uh, Merrick Garland said, the number one takeaway was the idea that hundreds of armed law enforcement officials stood by and waited um, as they treated uh, the shooter as a barricaded suspect instead of doing what they have been taught uh, for decades, and that was an active shooter situation is to immediately go in and neutralize the threat. Um, Jordan Elder, uh, Matt Roy, both of you, thank you so much for what you have done. Uh, we will continue to monitor uh, your reports. You will be live today on uh, News 4 at 5 o'clock and then throughout the evening as well. Uh, Jordan, thank you.